In this video, I'm going to share some tips about character rigging. And even though I'm going to be using Houdini to show different examples, these tips are not meant to be software specific. So hopefully you will be able to apply them in any software you use for character rigging. With that, let's start with tip number one, which is learn fundamentals, not setups. So when learning character rigging, I wouldn't start with complex systems like the arm, leg, spine, and so on. And, but I would rather learn the fundamentals uh, like the, how transformation work, how deformation work, and uh, how constraints work. And this is very similar to how painters learn or concept artists. They don't start with really complex uh, paintings. They start with fundamentals of perspective, shape, form, and uh, you know uh, how color theory works. And, and all those things are very similar in learning character rigging. So if you are learning directly you know, a complex spine set without understanding those fundamentals, we are not probably learning a lot from that. We are basically just copying the existing system. So uh, I'm going to show here a simple example. So this is a character which has a capture applied in a simple skeleton without any special setups. But let's imagine that we just learned a very fancy arm setup and we want to apply to this character. And if we don't understand the fundamentals, how the formation works, and we don't first make sure that uh, these joints are properly placed for the deformation, then, then it doesn't really matter how good the setup is put on top of it if the deformation and other things don't work correctly, or if we don't understand how to put uh, new setups into, uh, into the existing setups, for instance, how parenting and constraints work. So, for instance, we could, if we don't understand, well, we, we might be placing this shoulder joint correctly, which affects the formation uh, a lot. And it's much more important, you know, than a, uh, one of the arm rigging, uh, arm setups features. So in such cases, it really doesn't matter how good a setup is, is put on top of it if the underlying part of the setup is not working correctly. So that's why I think it's important to learn fundamentals first, because if, if you don't understand fundamentals, we are basically just copying these existing setup systems. And we don't know how to extract the information we need, and we don't know how to apply them to our own characters correctly. So we might have problems like we see here from um, like joint placements, or we don't know how to exactly create proper constraints, parenting, so that, for instance, scale might work correctly and things like that. So fundamentals should be first. Next one is to focus on essential components of a good character rig. And for me, there are two components of a good character rig. The first one is to provide a pleasing deformation. And the second one is it provides good controls for the animator to achieve the deformation. And a lot of times, especially the beginners, I see that they focus on the control part and the feature part of the rig uh, instead of focusing on the deformation part which can be even more important that, than the control part, especially because if you have a full featured rig with all the controls uh, and all the fancy features, if the deformation um, of the character is not pleasing and nice to look at, then uh, all those features are pretty much useless. And that is why I think that when learning the character rigging, uh, the focus of learning should be on both the control and the deformation part and not just on the setup part or, or the control part. Moving on to tip number three, which is to analyze the character first. And with that, I mean, you should first look at the character design and look at the performance that is required of the character, because all that will affect the character rig. We should look at things like what parts of the character will be simulated, will the cloud be simulated, or should have any special controls in it. So all that will help us better distribute, uh, distribute the time we have for the character rig and help us decide on the features that will be required of the character. And here I have a character from uh, one of my short films. And notice that this character has uh, a very short torso, large head, long legs. And all this affects how the character uh, setup should be approached. And for instance, we should ask ourselves, uh, will this character uh, require you know, noodle-shaped legs uh, because they are so long? Uh, will, this, will this torso stretch? Uh, and, you know, sh should we have squash and stretch in the head because it's so large and so on. So all such things should be considered at the beginning. 
The next one would be that a simple rig that works is better than a complex rig that breaks. And I think that this one is very important because a lot of times uh, there are some new rigging discovery and fancy rigs that are, are pretty impressive, but they come sometimes with uh, issues that make the rig break. And if I had two choices, uh, for instance, a simple rig with, uh, which has been proven to work and a complex rig that has these kind of issues, I would uh, usually choose the simple rig that works. And uh, there, are, there are only two exceptions to this uh, for me, and that is that there is something essential in the complex rig uh, that is essential for the character and performance that the simple rig can't achieve. And the second one is that the animator uh, who is animating the character is aware of those rig issues and limitations and would rather work with those limitations than work with a simple rig. In all other cases, I would rather go with a simple rig. My next tip would be to not automate everything that can be automated. And while automated features are a nice demo reel material, they can also cause a lot of problems for the animator if, it's, if the rig assumes everything and tries to automate the whole process. This, in the end, just makes the animator to counter animate a lot. And here I'm going to show a simple example of an automated feature, and that is the automatic placement of the twist effector or pole vector, however you wish to call it, which uh, tries to assume what would be the best position for this uh, twist effector, depending on the rotation and uh, translation of the leg, so that this angle of the leg is sort of always at the correct position. Um, in the end, this feature proved to be not so uh, useful as I initially thought, as uh, when I was animating the character, I was counter animating uh, quite a lot. And in the end, I saw that the manual placement of this twist effector would sometimes be much more useful than this automatic feature. My next tip would be to deconstruct the complexity of rigging into smaller elements. And rigs can sometimes be very complex and filled with features, but those features are usually put on top of each other. So you should look at uh, rigging more like building things with toy bricks. You know, we have just small toy elements and when you put them together, we build something much more complex. And the same is with character rigging. Uh, we have a small amount of tools that, with which we can build uh, all sorts of things. And so when creating complex rigs, uh, my, my suggestion is to look at each element, each feature separately. So the IK part, the FK part, the bandy part, and so on. And once we solve those things separately and each feature is solved, it's much easier to build uh, and put them together and build much more complex system of that. So let's look at this leg setup example. So this leg setup is an IK setup with stretchy support. It has a simple reverse foot setup, and it also has support for bandy controls and allows the animator to decide how many controls does it need for the, for the bending of the leg, and so on. So these sort of features are not built in one go. They are built on top of each other. So when creating the leg setup, first question is should be IK setup, FK setup, or whatever. And so first the IK setup is built, on top, then it is decided does, what kind of foot should it be. So, so in this case, it's reverse foot, and then the reverse foot is set at on top of the IK setup. On top of that, we start working on the bandy setup, and this bandy setup uh, is something that uh, requires just two points, the start point and the end point, in which case we use the existing uh, structure of the IK leg. So we have hip for the start and knee for the end, for the topper, for the upper part, and knee and ankle for the lower part of the bandy setup. And then we work from there to to build a system that allows flexible control creation for the bandy part and so on. So all these things are first solved on its own and then put together to create the final setup. My next tip would be to not get obsessed with fancy features. And this is something I sometimes see in character rigging demo reels, and that is that the features of the character rig seem more impressive than the idea of animating it. Now, the rig should provide the animator with the easiest possible way to pose and animate the character and not to impress fellow riggers. 
So here's an example of a simplified setup, and that is for the fingers. So sometimes I see these uh, very complex setups for the fingers, like the IK uh, setups. And uh, while they're fine for most animations, the FK setup uh, is usually better and works more than OK. If the character is not doing something very specific with fingers, the FK setup in such case is simple, easy to create, and works just fine. So focusing on the essentials and making them those work good is usually, is usually better than bringing all sorts of fancy features into the setup. My next tip would be to listen to the animators. Now, animators are the ones who actually use the character rig. So it's extremely important to listen to their feedback. Now, if we are the one who are actually animating the character and we are building actually the rig for ourselves, then we should take notes while animating and adjust any rig problems. Now, if you are actually preparing the rig for someone else, then you should listen to the feedback, especially listen for any pain points that the rig has and which parts of the rig the animators are struggling the most. Also, if there are any other parts of the rig they especially like, see if the same concept can be applied to other parts of the rig as well. The next one would be to not put shot-specific rig features into the main rig, as this will only clutter the rig and make it slower. Instead, shot-specific rig features should be put into a separate version of the rig. And here is an example of shot-specific rig feature. Here we have a close-up on the character's foot as the character jumps on the ground. And here I wanted to have some additional control over the shape of the foot and I added two additional deformers that are band deformers and, and also some additional control over this part of the pants to allow some overlapping action. And these are just three deformers that were added in this specific shot. They were easy to implement and they do not um, add clutter to the main rig. And the next one would be that we should understand there's usually more than one way to do things. And by this I mean that we shouldn't stick always to the same type of arm setup, the same type of spine setup, for instance, but instead look at the character and see what kind of setup would work best for the character. And if you're sticking to the same type of the setup for all the time, we should look at it and see where it falls short and see whether or not can it be improved. And these sort of questions will only help us find better rigging solutions. Now let's look at an example how the same part of the setup was applied differently uh, for different characters. Now in this character I have two controls for the, for the bandy part of the arm setup, so to the control the curvature of the lower and upper arm. So there's one control that can be moved around and this controls the curvature. Now, if you look at the next character, there's also one control, but this one was applied differently as it works like more like a volume deformer. So it works on the radius and it just shapes the whole geometry that way because he has much shorter um, arms and I thought it would be better to sort of allow more of a shaping kind of effect. And, and if you look at the next character, this one also has a bit longer arms, and this time I wanted to have more controls over the shape, so one control would not be enough. So I added more controls here, and this could shape this whole uh, lower and upper arm much more precisely. So, as you can see, there are many different approaches uh, to solving similar problems. So this should be always taken into account what we are trying to achieve here. And this is how at least I look at character rigging, and that is that each character offers an opportunity to learn or discover something new. And my last tip would be to always optimize the character rig. We should always check whether the rig has any performance issues and whether or not it can be improved. We should always also check whether certain parts of the rig could be isolated, turned on and off with a checkbox button, especially if there are features that are not constantly needed. Animation is a very slow process and a fast rig can help a lot. And those are my tips on character rigging. I hope you found this video useful and see you next time.